This hood is beautiful, brand new, perfect. There wasn't anything wrong with it. And naturally, that's why I'm gonna cut it up. I really, really like that. What's up, it is Casey from Casey's Customs. We're back on the beautiful 1965 Mustang. In this video, we do some metal work on our cowl. We finally get the tail lights figured out and we start on a front air diffuser. Let's go. the beautiful 1965 Mustang and I have a ton of parts that came in. We need to weld up our hood scoop. I also got a sheet of quarter inch ABS plastic that I can make my front diffuser out of. We also got our Shelby tail lights in. I don't know which one of these we're gonna do first, but we got a lot of shit to do, so let's get to work. Oh, also, I just forgot all kinds of shit. I forgot that I got my camber adjustments in for the front end. Whenever the airbags are in, they actually move the wheel in just a little bit, the strut. And so whenever they're all the way down, instead of being in like this, they're actually out. It looks funky. It hurts my turning. You know, obviously when they're out like that, you, you don't get a bunch of tuck, so you have turning issues. So we're gonna go ahead and install those and get a little bit of camber in. And then look at these. Oh my God. They're so perfect. That is what we are going to run for our taillights. So what I need to do is pop these stock ones out and actually weld up the holes that are there because we're not going to need those. We're going to make our own holes now. So I think what I'm going to do is just weld everything flush. I'll have a completely flat panel back here and then we can put those taillights in. Technically, I could try and use some of this hole that's already here, but I, I don't know that that's going to work. I'm going to pop these off real quick and we'll see, but most likely I think I'm going to have to just shave everything off and then we will cut our own holes. But let's take these out and see what it looks like first. awesome holy shit that looks cool that is perfect that is exactly what i need this is technically just the lens this actually bolts into a bucket a full tail light bucket and the tail light buckets aren't here yet i'm supposed to get them in a couple days so we'll go ahead we'll weigh on this um i also might be able to just cut this i might not have to shave all this like i thought i was going to we're gonna go ahead and wait on these uh until i get my buckets because i might not have to do anything other than cut out the new buckets that's cool i like that let's uh let's go mess with our hood scoop a little bit on the last video i got started on the hood scoop it's currently mounted with screws it's not going to be mounted with screws you know whenever it's finished obviously but i did use the screws so i can get it exactly where i want it it measures out perfect everything is straight everything is square but obviously the hood is still underneath it well that doesn't do us any good the whole reason you want the scoop is more air you know more room for everything so what we're going to do right now is get it marked i'm going to take it put it over on the sawhorse and i'm going to cut that sheet out from the hood and also there is structure underneath the hood i'm going to go ahead and cut some of that out as well i'll probably have to replace some of the structure so that the hood just isn't super floppy but i'm going to find that out whenever i start cutting so let's cut some shit Check it out. We got it marked where we're going to cut it. Uh, originally, I was going to cut it all the way out to here, but uh, the way the bracing is on the inside, it just didn't work out that way. The good news is I cut everything I could, so now there's no bracing in here, and I've actually welded the bracing to the hood. It's actually super, super strong. It's not wimpy. It's not, you know, moving around a bunch like I thought it was going to be. Um, and now I got it marked where my new hole is going to be. So I am going to have a little bit of a border on the inside, but it's still a 
three foot by two foot hole almost. I mean, this is a giant hole in the hood, but I'm really happy how strong this is. It's only weak in the middle, which is gonna be gone anyway, but all this out here, super, super strong. So very, very happy. And now time to cut it. I want to say thank you as always to Holly for partnering with me on this 65 Mustang and sending me such nice parts. This hood is beautiful, brand new, perfect. There wasn't anything wrong with it. And naturally, that's what I'm going to cut it up. Okay, so I'm adding a piece to the back, and I thought I liked that because it matched the windshield, or at least it was supposed to, but it looks like I got too much angle. So I'm going to cut it a little bit more up to here and then change my angle. I also don't like how much it sticks out. It definitely looks better than being square the way it was. Also, I got this all tacked on. It's not going anywhere. Hood is super strong. I'm really, really happy about that. I picked it up and it had like no sag in it, which is awesome. But I think we got to... I think we gotta tweak this angle a little bit. Check it out. Got that section all welded in. Matches the windshield angle perfectly. I absolutely love it. I was not a big fan when it was cut short like that. You know, it was just squared off. That looks perfect. Um, I'm not usually the big fan of cowl hoods, but this cowl section matching the 65 hood crease in the middle, just, it looks like it was meant for it. I am a big fan of it. I did get my 68 Cougar taillights in, although it looks like these bezels I bought are these taillight lenses and this billet bezel, it, it's supposed to go to these, but I don't know. That doesn't look like it's going to fit at all. I know these are for a 68 Shelby, and I know Shelby's used Cougar taillights like as their model, so technically they should work, but it's not looking good so far. So what I need from these basically is the housing so that the lens can bolt to it. These were like 300 bucks. These were like 300 bucks, so I'm already in this quite a lot of money, and then the housing that you can buy for these is another 300 bucks. And I really don't want to be in taillights thousand dollars. <laughs> so I was hoping these would work. If these don't work, if I get these all taken apart and it looks like it's not going to work with these, we will end up making a taillight housing ourselves because there's no way I'm buying more shit. But let's break these all down and see if we can't make them work first. We have great news. I'm being sarcastic. These are not even close to those. These are called California style taillights. I guess they're just their own style of taillight. I thought that the backing to them, like the housing to them, I thought those were $300. I said that earlier. No, no, those are like $1,500. These are like some special bullshit. We are definitely not paying that much for them. So I'm going to build a backing myself. I guess I'll just try and resell these because I don't need them. What I did was I went ahead and made a template for these since they are apparently worth their weight in gold. That way I don't have to try and hold them up and figure out where I'm gonna cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and get this template put exactly where I need it. And I'm gonna go ahead and 
measure it, make sure it's level and all that good stuff. And then I'm actually not gonna cut all the way out. I'm gonna cut about a quarter inch inside there. And then these are our mounting holes. So I wanna make sure the cut is inside the mounting holes. And then we can actually get those tail lights, the lenses mounted. And then what we'll do, since we're probably gonna run LED lights anyway, we'll be able to basically just have the LEDs hooked to the back end of it. We'll have to build those another day. The good news is the LEDs don't get hot. So if the LEDs are kind of like close to the lens, it's not the end of the world. The old style headlights, 1157 headlights, they're very hot. That's why you gotta have, you know, like a three inch gap from where the bulb is to the end of the lens, cause it'll get hot. Well, luckily LEDs don't do that. So it shouldn't be super hard, you know, making the backing, but we're gonna dig into that another day. For now, I'm gonna get these all measured, make sure they're square, make sure everything's perfect, and uh, cut some giant holes in this uh, taillight panel. I'm whipping my hand around a lot right now, but let's do all that. <laughs> Check it out. I got them where they're gonna go. They're measured. They're within like a quarter inch of each side being directly center, which is pretty good because nothing is ever perfectly center when it comes to this old shit. I don't even think this taillight panel is technically centered, <laughs> but I got it where I like it. It looks good. This is the very, very edge of where the taillight goes and that's the mounting hole. So the goal is to cut right along there like that all the way around. And then that'll be open, and that is where our, you know, light fixtures and stuff will go. So basically, kind of right along that, all the way around. Now, the only bad thing I run into is these holes now are going to be exposed because of where the tail light is going to be. I was moving it down farther so they wouldn't be exposed. It didn't look as good. It looks good kind of having a little bit of metal, you know, on each side. So what I'm going to do is cut this all the way out and then we're going to go ahead and weld these up so that, you know, there isn't holes where our tail light goes. So I have to do that real quick. That won't be that big of a deal. But yeah, uh, we got to cut some shit and we got to kind of be cute with it. We don't want to go crazy and uh, mess this hole up too bad. And if you go too far one way, you'll end up seeing it. We don't want to see it from our tail lights. So let's cut some shit. nuts are like this big well that might be the coolest set of tail lights i've ever seen in my life <laughs> we'll get a better look whenever i pull it out but i really 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 like those Ooh, sweet man that looks good the next day it's the next day i just came into work i'm looking at this these are the coolest goddamn taillights I've ever seen in my entire life. Holy shit, that looks good. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to start working on putting the round bar lip on all of my fender flares. Right now, it's just a piece of sheet metal. It's kind of wimpy. You know, it's not super strong. Also, it's sharp. I don't like that. So, I'm going to put round bar on the corner or on the edges of all of those. Also... These fender flares are a little wonky. This one here needs to be reshaped. We gotta cut it and kinda, you know, give it a little different shape to it. It's no big deal, I knew that going in. When it can move, you know, an inch or two <laughs> in and out, it's hard to get your shape where you want it. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that too. Also, I wanna start on the diffuser. That's a whole lot of work. Uh, also, I wanna get it outside and look at those tail lights before we put it up on jack stands and start messing with all these fender flares. So let's push her outside, do the old walk around type deal. Then we're gonna bring it in, put it on jack stands and just dig in. Also, we have our camber adjustments. That whole shock, spindle, everything needs to come out, coil over, whatever you want to call it. 
all that needs to come out uh, to put those in. So let's take it outside, get a nice little walk around, and then we're just gonna take everything apart and put it on jack stands. Man, I re really, really like that. Holy shit, that looks good. Oh my God, somebody's jamming. Wow, that looks good. She's starting to get there. Check this out. Also, I said this in the last video, but people didn't see it. So, spoiler angle is the same as the windshield. Windshield angle is the same as the hood scoop now. So it's all the same. I freaking love this thing. All right, let's take her inside and uh, rip it all apart. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try and explain this the best I can because I started mixing up some fiberglass. I went over to turn the camera on and the fiberglass already started hardening because it's so hot outside. So I worked real quick and this was all on time lapse. Pop the bumper off. The plan is to make a diffuser, which a diffuser is just a flat piece of plastic that goes on your front. It's like lower than your bumper. It's basically an air splitter is what it is. I want one of those. They look really cool on like race cars. I want one below where my diffuser is that I already have. This is like a factory Mustang diffuser, air dam, whatever they call it. This is obviously upside down right now. It's a little wimpy piece of plastic and I was trying to straighten it. I put uh, some square tubing in there first, metal square tubing, and that was too heavy so it was weighing it down. So I actually found a one by six board and I clamped it to that piece of plastic to make it perfectly straight. And I went ahead and fiberglassed it on. And what I can do now is I will take, whenever this dries, however long that takes, I will sand all this down flat. This edge here is going to get cut just a little bit because it actually dips down like a V. I'm going to sand all that flat. And then what I'll be able to do is put my diffuser, you know, it sticks out longer than this. I'll be able to screw that straight into that wood and it'll work out really good. It'll be really strong. I also have struts for the diffuser that holds it flat so it's not, you know, dipping down or anything. But uh, this actually worked out really, really well. I wasn't planning on fiberglassing wood to it, but this is a real flimsy little piece of plastic. It's not even fiberglass. It's actually plastic, so it's just real wimpy. So this is actually gonna beef it up a lot. The wood's really light. It's a hell of a lot lighter than the metal was gonna be. So we're gonna let that dry for a little bit and I am going to start on round bar on the edge of these fender flares. And I don't know how far we're gonna get, but uh, we need to get this video done so it goes up on Tuesday, so. Let's just keep working and see what happens. It's the end of the day. This is the worst part of any fiberglass job is sanding this shit. So I'm gonna do it right now while the fan's on me and we're gonna call this a day. And we'll kick this back up tomorrow and uh, finish this video. And my favorite part, coming to go. Yay! It is the next day. This is fully cured and sanded. And I got to be honest with you, I've never really added wood to a bumper before, <laughs> but it actually ended up working out really well. This thing is super, super strong. The whole reason I wanted to do that was to not only make it square, but make it really strong. It came to a point, like a dovetail, and that was okay. I think that was how it was designed. But the problem was this plastic was so flimsy that it wasn't really square. Like the dovetail was kind of off a little bit. So this actually served two purposes. Not only does it give me something to screw my diffuser to, but now it is super, super stout. It's actually really strong, which is nice. And it's square. What we're going to do now is put this on our quarter inch ABS plastic. And we're going to trace out what we want our diffuser to look like. The whole reason we're doing this, that front air dam doesn't look bad by any means, but it's super, super narrow. It comes like, I don't know, to here. It just doesn't look right. You want your diffuser to go all the way out to your tires. It looks better. That's how the race cars do it. So let's uh, put it down there, trace it. This is also the first diffuser I've ever built. So we're kind of just winging this whole thing, but I think we can get it figured out. Let's uh, cut some plastic. <laughs> So I just measured the front track width. I actually went all the way out to the outside of the wheel. 
Usually when you measure track width, you go by the center of the wheel, but outside of the wheel to outside of the wheel is 75 inches. She's a big old wide girl. So what we're gonna do now, I want this to at least be 75 inches. It can actually be a little bit more if I wanted to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm kinda gonna use our bumper as our general outline. I want this to go a little bit wider than this, but not a ton. I don't need it out there that far. We're going to trace it out and make sure we got it 75. And then I think I want it probably like 14 inches wide. I'll measure that too. And then we will trace it out and cut it. Here's the great news. This sheet is so big, I can fuck up at least three times. So that's always nice. <laughs> Got the plastic cut out, got it mounted. I made it huge. I figured it'd be a lot easier to get it mounted to the actual bumper and then I can shave it down. It's plastic, so it sands real easy. What I am gonna go ahead and add now, I was gonna wait. These are chrome struts and these kind of help the very, very end of this not be too whippy. And not only that, they look cool as shit. So we're gonna go ahead and mount four of these. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the car, see what it looks like, and we'll start shaping it. Obviously, this boxy shit isn't gonna cut it. You know, we're gonna have some some round edges. I was I had all the round edges marked on the plastic, and I said, you know what? What looks good on the floor and what looks good on the car are gonna be completely different. So I just left everything big, wide. We'll get it up on the car, and then we will start shaving it down. I assume matching this angle will probably be what looks looks best, but I don't know until I get it on the car. So let's get these struts on there and then we'll uh, throw her back on and probably call this a video because I gotta get this to Richard and we have way too many hours in this week. Check this thing out, it looks awesome. I need to adjust my struts because right now the sides are up a little bit. If I adjust them, they'll be level with the running board. But I am a huge fan, I absolutely love it. I think it looks great. The shape is way off, but I already knew that. So I've taken some tape and I've ran it right across the line so it matches our bumper shape. Cool, very, very happy. I am beat, got way, way too much work in this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna cut these right now or do that on the next episode. I'm gonna go take a break and think about it and we will go from there. Thank you very much for watching. This front diffuser was definitely a lot of fun. I've never built one before. I don't build a lot of stuff out of plastic and fiberglass, so it was kind of nice stepping out of my comfort zone. I really love it. We definitely just need to get that other strut installed because right now it doesn't look like it's quite level, but it looks awesome. My dad saw it. He's never seen one before. He came and he goes, that thing's cool as hell. I was like, all right, so we're getting somewhere. Stay tuned in the next video. We're gonna do the round bar on our fender flares. We're also gonna start doing some interior stuff. We still have a lot of structure work we need to do. And then hopefully we'll get some of our sheet metal buttoned up and we can start on the body work here very, very soon. I have to get this to Holly's show in under two months, so we're definitely in crunch time now. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff they tell you at the end of videos, and check out some of my other videos. Peace. Love you.